What's up my pre-calc people? Welcome to AP Pre-Calculus. In this video we're going to talk about how to solve polynomial inequalities. All right, very, very, well, I don't even want to say hard or easy. It's just something you got to be able to do. Now, solving polynomials for actual zeros or solutions. You got to factor, you got to use the quadratic formula, you got to do a whole bunch of fun stuff that we've already maybe learned. But what we're going to do in this video is talk about how to solve inequalities, which is a little bit different. The basic process is this. You have to first find your zeros. But because we're not solving an equation, we're solving inequality, we don't call them solutions, we call them critical values. You then take those critical values and you put them onto a number line and then you have to test each individual interval of that number line. So you're going to pick a number in each interval created on that number line by those critical values and then you're going to determine does that value that I picked turn the overall function into a positive or turn into a negative. If it turns into a, po a positive, you're looking for values that are greater than zero. And if you're looking for your function to be greater than zero, that's going to be happy for you. And if you turn into a negative value, then that means your values are less than zero. And if you're looking for your polynomial to be less than zero, then that interval will make you happy. The only other thing you got to keep in mind is if you want to equal zero. So if we have that less than or equal to sign or that greater than or equal to sign, that means we're actually going to fill in solid dots at those critical values at our zeros. And that means when we create our intervals, we got to use brackets because those values would be included since at those values they would actually make your polynomial equal to zero, which would be okay with if we have that little line for or equal to under our less than sign or greater than sign. All right, let's just dive in and look at some examples. All right, so to solve this first inequality, I got to get a zero on one side. That's the very first step. So I'm going to take the 2x cubed. I'm going to subtract the x squared over. I still have the negative 15x there is less than zero. All right, this is the most important part. I'm looking for values that are negative, less than zero, and not equal to zero, got to be less than zero. Now, the first step is finding my roots or finding my zeros. Now, to do that, I'm going to have to factor. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out an x. I see that they all have an x. So that gives me 2x squared minus x minus 15, less than 0. Then I'm going to continue to factor what's left over, or I could use the quadratic formula because that leftover part is quadratic right here. But I think I could go ahead and factor that. So I get a 2x and an x, let's see there. And then I'm going to put a uh, a 3 right here and a 5 right here. On the outside, that would be a 6x. I want that to be a negative, and I want that to be a positive. That way, I get my negative 15 when I multiply 5 times negative 3. And when I get that negative 6 on the outside and that 5x on the inside, I get that negative x in the middle. Now, this gives me zeros of, let's see here, x equals 0. 2x plus 5 equals 0, which means x equals negative 5 halves, and x minus 3 equals 0, which means x equals 3. Now, what a lot of kids try to do that's wrong is they'll probably be like, oh, 0 is less than 0, negative 5 thirds is less than 0, x minus 3. They don't know. No, 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 no. The next step is just finding those roots or those zeros of 0, negative 5 halves, and 3. Now what you do is you create a little number line. I'm going to make a number line here, and on that number line, you're going to put those values in order. So the negative 5 halves goes first, then the 0, then the 3. Now, because I don't want to equal 0, I strictly want to be less than 0, I'm going to put open circles there. So my intervals are going to need to use parentheses, not brackets. Now we just got to do some testing. So pick any number below negative 5 halves, any number, like negative 1 million. All right, if I plug in negative 1 million here, I'm going to get a negative. Plug in negative 1 million here, I'm going to get a negative. Plug in negative 100, negative 1 million here, I'm going to get a negative. So I'm going to get a negative times a negative times a negative, which is overall a negative value. Now, I like negative values because I'm looking to be less than 0. All right, now I'm going to pick a number between negative 5 halves and 0, like negative 1. All right, plug in negative 1 right here, I get a negative. Plug in negative 1 right here, I'm going to get a positive. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 5 is still a positive. And then plug in negative 1 right here, negative 1 minus 3 is a negative. So I get a negative times a positive times a negative, which makes a positive. I don't want positive, so I actually don't like that interval. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the next interval, I'm going to choose a number between 0 and 3, like 2. All right, plug in 2 right here. That's going to get me a positive. 2 is positive. Plug in 2 right here. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5 is a positive. Plug in 2 right here. 2 minus 3 is, oh, that's a negative. Okay, so a positive times a positive times a negative is going to be overall be a negative, and I like negatives. I want numbers that are negative, less than 0, so I like that interval. 
I'm going to do one more. Pick any number greater than three, like 200. All right. Plug in 200 right here for X. I get a positive. 200 is positive. Plug in 200 right here. 2 times 200 is 400 plus 5 is still a positive. Plug in 200 right here for X, and I still get a positive. 200 minus 3 is still positive. So a positive times a positive times a positive is a positive, and I don't like positives. So my final answer is going to be the interval from negative infinity to negative 5 halves with a parenthesis, and then I'm going to take a break for a while, and then my next interval that creates negatives is going to be 0 to 3. So there's my final answer. This is the interval that will create all values that will make my inequality happy, meaning less than 0. Not too bad, but that's how you solve a polynomial inequality. All right, let's take a look at this next one here. And I already have a zero on this side by myself. I'm looking for numbers that are greater than zero, which is positive, or equal to zero. Now, the only thing I got to do next is I got to figure out what my zeros or my roots are. And I can, of course, do that by factoring or using the quadratic formula because this is a quadratic, a degree of two. But I'm going to go ahead and factor this. Let's see here. The only way to split up a 2x squared is a 2x and an x. Now I can split up uh, 15 with a 3 and a 5. Now on the outside, it's going to be a 10x. On the inside, that's going to be a 3x. And if I make that 10x positive and that 3x negative, I'll subtract them or combine them to get the negative 7x in the middle. So negative 3 times 5 is the positive 15 right here. Outside's a 10x. Inside's a negative 3x. That makes the 7x in the middle. All right, now again, don't set up any qualities. I can catch 2x minus 3 is greater than 0. No, 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 no. You're just finding your zeros. 2x minus 3 equals 0. That's a solution or a 0 of 3 halves. x plus 5 equals 0. That's another solution or another 0 of negative 5. Now, those are my critical values, we call them. So now I'm just going to create that number line. And on that number line, I'm going to put negative 5 and 3 halves. Got to make sure they put them in order. Filled in dots because that these values, I'm equal to 0, and I'm okay being equal to 0 in this problem. All right, now I'm going to do my test values. Pick a number way down here, like negative 100. 2 times negative 100 minus 3 is a negative value. Negative 100 plus 5 is a negative value, and a negative times a negative is a positive. And I like positives. I want to be greater than 0 for this problem. All right, pick a number between negative 5 and 3 halves, like 0. That's a nice easy one to pick. 2 times 0 minus 3 is negative. 0 plus 5 is positive. A negative times a positive is a negative, and I do not want to be negative. Next, pick a number up here greater than 3 halves, like 17. 2 times 17 minus 3, positive. 17 plus 5, positive. Two positives make a positive when you multiply them. So I got the two intervals where I'm greater than or equal to 0, and those intervals are going to make me happy. So my final answer is going to be negative infinity to negative 5 with the bracket because I can equal 0. And then I'm going to take a break, and I'm going to start up again from 3 halves with a bracket all the way towards infinity. So that's it. It's not too bad to solve these polynomial inequalities. A lot of kids overthink it, but it's all about getting those critical values, which are your zeros, and then putting them on a number line and testing your intervals out to see where you're going to create positives and where you're going to create negatives. And then you can pick the intervals that you want to make your inequality happy.